What's up everyone, River here and I'm here with week 8 of the PTL, the team builder against Hit Vicious and Quebec Vertique. Uh, he's currently 3 and 4, whereas I finally went back to a positive record of 4 and 3. He is one of the 4 replacement coaches that I'll be facing back to back. And his team is quite solid. As you can see right here, he has a couple of really big threats, he has a really good defensive core. And when I looked at this matchup initially, I thought I was going to have a horrible time. I initially thought this matchup was going to be absolutely horrible between the likes of uh, Whimsicott, Hydreigon, uh, Volcanion, obviously Weezing and Melodic as defensive options. This, this matchup in my mind looked horrible, but now that I've actually put together a team, I think I have a very clear cut win con. And it is not the Pokemon you see in front of you. This Pokemon is gonna try to enable my win card. We're bringing a specially offensive Zygarde with dual step in Corn Forcer and Earth Power, Sludge Wave, and Hidden Power Items. The goal of this is effectively to lure some of his physical walls, thinking mainly of Gligar and Milonic, put a bit of, little bit of chip on them so they are in range of my eventual win con, which when you look at my team can really only be one of two things. The, the speed here is to outspeed a timid Volcanion, which then I should be able to knock out with an Earth Power, unless it's an Assault Vest variant. Whereas the remainder is obviously in bulk, simply to live a couple of hits. The, um, I think that the uh, moves also speak for themselves. HP Ice is there for the quad weakness, dual stab because it's stab, and Sludge Away for also quad weakness, specifically Whimsicott which I will need to catch up a switch in, but Whimsicott is like is pretty much the go-to answer to Zygarde on this team, assuming he brings it. Though, if there is any set that I fear in particular, it would be a choice spec set with either Moonblast or Nature Power as a dedicated uh, check to Halucha. Simply because with Nature Power, it could utilize Stack Phoenix Terrain to have priority on it, and then my own one boost doesn't even matter. However, that is a possibility. I'm not sure if my opponent is aware of that option or if he's even willing to risk it, simply because if the rain is not up, he will have a tri attack. And pretty tri tri attack will not nearly do as much damage. So that, that was uh, quickly uh, going over my wind con actually already and the thing that has to enable it, because the wind con is Halucha. Halucha is a Pokemon I initially thought would have a lot of issues, simply because he has two Haze users, he has Will-O-Wisp as well on Weezing, he has very good defensive options through uh, Jirachi, the, the two I just mentioned earlier, and Weezing Melodic, and Gligar. However, Taunt nullifies most of those. Jirachi cannot take two hits from Drain Punch, Gligar pretty much can do nothing when Taunted, Weezing is not a threat when Taunted, only Milotic is still an issue, simply because it could have Dragon That is the one thing I do need to take uh, into consideration if he brings it. If he does not bring it, then I feel really comfortable saying that Halucha should get 4 KOs. And the moveset besides Taunt is very straightforward. Salt Stance to power up, and Dual Step just, um, yeah, break through his entire team. I could opt for High Jump Kick in this case, but I feel like Drain Punch is very good. Simply because I know I will have to take a hit, whether it's a Sludge Bomb from Weezing, or maybe a Rock Slide from Gliga. But I need the healing from Drain Punch, so I can live any one hit later on from Jirachi. Simply because a physically offensive Jirachi with Z Headbutt or Heart Stamp could still be very annoying. It could hit really hard. I'm saying physical specifically because my special defense will be higher due to the Misty Seed. So I don't think a special Jirachi is going to show up for that reason, though I guess for a different Pokemon it could do that. And I think that if I play around, especially the Melodic, but to an extent also Jirachi and the Gligar properly, then this thing can easily win, my, win me the game. So obviously another enabler we need for that is the Terrain through Tapu Fini. I couldn't really think of much for the Tapu Fini set to do outside of tank it and eventually sack it so Halucha can get a free switch in. So I went with what I thought was the most uh, covering set that I could think of. With 
with the full physically defensive set, so it could take hits from several different Pokemon, such, such as the physical Jirachi that I'm anticipating, but also the Dalmachis. Hmm. Hence the Rindo Berry. Rindo Berry will allow me to take one hit from any Delmai set, even a Bandit Power Whip will not want to KO. This should allow me to get either an Ace Magnazoth or a Light Screen, or simply do something before Fiji goes down. At that note, Mega Gyarados is also quite a threat to my team, I haven't even mentioned it before, but this is also a very dedicated answer to it, because I feel that the worst Mega Gyarados could do to threaten Fini would be to drag lands up on the switch in and click Earthquake. Earthquake would do about um, 60, I think. I think, that, that's, um, I think that's either a crit or a max roll 60. I'm not entirely certain on top of my head. Point being is, Fini can easily deal with it, hit him for either Ninja's Madness or Moonblast, which do similar damage to him with my spread, assuming he's offensive. And then I still get a Lucha in. Because Halucha's Drain Punch, without any boosts, should do about 60%, which means that if I land a Nature's Madness or go for the Moonblast on an un uh, uninvested variant, <sighs> then Halucha will be able to knock it out. Taunt is there, similarly to Halucha, just to prevent certain shenanigans. Again, Root Stalling, maybe from Gligar, maybe the same with Recover from Melodic, depending Weezing from being annoying. There's a lot of small ideas I have there, and depending on the scenario, I may not need taunt whatsoever, I may have wanted surf, and it could be a lifesaver. It, it could really be either side, and I'm about to flip that coin. So next is Tyranitar, it's my only hazard setter this week, and it's choice band variants. Those two phrases together don't sound right, but that is gonna be how it is. He effectively has no switch in to dual stat plus ice punch. And Ice Punch is mainly just there, so I can 2-hit KO Gligar. Yeah, that, that's what it was. 2-hit two two KO Gligar was the main reason for Ice Punch. And Stealth Rock is nice simply if I feel I can't predict the switch in, if I'm not confident in predicting the switch in. And so that the likes of Jirachi and Milotic become easier to deal with for Halucha. It's a very straightforward set once more. The speed is there to outspeed. I want to say that it's uninvested Gyarados, but I think it was uninvested Volcanium. It was uh, a, a, a relatively, a relatively mid-speed Pokemon, like a base 70 Pokemon, base 75 Pokemon, that I meant outspeed if it was uninvested. And the rest is there in bulk. Divided so that I will take minimal damage from rocks while still having very solid bulk all around. Then we have the a little bit of an oddball set, similar to, no, not as oddball as the Zygarde, but Assault Physical Pendula. This one here was with the mindset that the only two Pokemon that could outspeed it are special attackers. So I want to minimize the damage I take from them while still maximizing the damage output. Originally I was considering a standard Life Orb set, but with the mindset I just described, I opted to go for the Assault Vest variant. I made him a little bit slower, this is uh, not outspeeding those two, but also not outspeeding Jirachi. I accepted that Jirachi was to outspeed, but because I think it's relatively likely it's going to be Scarf, I don't think that's an issue. Plus, again, I know it's going to be physical. At least I am 99% certain it's going to be physical. So I have a solid switch in top of Fini and even Zygarde if I anticipate him not to click Ice Punch. Because again, if it's Scarf, you can't switch. If it's not Scarf, then I can take the hit most likely and retaliate with Earth Power. Once again, I, I think the movesets of my Pokemon tend to be very straightforward. Simply because I want the option, I want the typing coverage for everything. And after that, it, it goes to straightforward utility, in this case, Volt Switch. Don't really think there has much to be said outside of that. This this thing can tank three hits from Jolteon or Whimsicott, unless it is a very offensive Whimsicott. So overall, I think this is a very good Pokemon. It also deals really well with the Pokemon that I fear uh, my Hojo will struggle with, such as my Melodic and Gligar. So I think this is a very good brain on my part, and I hope that it does its job. Lastly, 
no offensive nine tails. It got seven kills in two games, but for this one, I'm expecting it to get zero. I'm expecting it to get its first death because it's pretty much suicide fodder. Even though it is bulky, it does have a wiki berry to heal up, which was a roll for, I believe, I can take two from Gyarados behind Veil, only to have the wiki berry crocked. So effectively, I can take three hits, and I think Freeze Dry was a three hit KO on him. Even though I will be more likely to play Roar and attempt to get him away with his Dragon Dances. Because yeah, I can take three hits from plus one Gyarados. That's what it does after Veil. Obviously, with Veil, I can do that. Besides that, Veil on itself is very useful for Halucha if I want to set up and I don't want to take too much damage. Because outside of the Milotic I mentioned earlier, there is one thing I feel that can really become an issue. And that is Weezing. Weezing with Sludge Bomb, if he connects two, and the first one poisons me. Because, uh, okay, let's be honest here, I need to set up in his face. Because he's gonna come in, let's assume, I already, I mean, already, like the actual scenario is both of them are in, I just got my own burden boost, I don't have any boost outside of that. I have to taunt him first, let's say that is a successful taunt on an will -Wisp. Then I have to Sword Sense twice, or I have to Sword Sense once and attack twice. Effectively, he can hit me twice. That, that is the point I'm trying to make. If he hits me twice with Sludge Bomb and the first one poisons, then that will knock out Halucha. That is what partly the Light Screen of Pini is for, and Aurora Veil Ninetales. And that can apply to many different other Pokemon. That can imply, apply to uh, Jirachi's um, Zen Headbutt as well, or Heart Stamp, or whatever he opts to go for for a Psychic Stamp. That could apply to potentially the Gyarados if he's at full HP and I need to set up to take him out because I can't take him out from full at neutral. Lastly, Hypnosis. I was toying around with Encore, I was toying around with Disable, but I think those are two attacks. Pardon, I'm, I guess I'm tired, I don't feel it. But I, I feel that uh, both Disable and Encore aren't consistent. And I know I'm comparing consistency to a 55% accuracy move. The 60%, okay, 60 still. But I think that in scenarios where I want to click either Disable or Encore, my opponent should be aware of that and correct it. Hence, Hypnosis comes in and it, is, it, it was pretty much a filler move. I will not deny that this is pretty much a filler move, similar to, to uh, Finny's Taunt. But it is a filler move that I feel most confident in, unless I want a Moonblast or Mega Gyarados, which is an alternative. And now that I think about it, that's not even a bad alternative. So I may or may not switch it up right before the battle. <laughs> yeah, typical. With that said though, that was the team builder for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I hope to see you all tomorrow.